Now, let's see how well you can plan to get out alive if a fire breaks out in your home. The house is on fire. There's smoke and there's flame. How much time do you think you have to wake up the family, to call the fire department, to look for the valuables, look for the pet? How much time do you have to fight the fire? How much time do you think you have? How much time do you have before this fire could kill you? One minute? Five minutes? Do you have 10 minutes or 15 minutes? I would say about 10 minutes. I don't know, 10 minutes? About 10 or 15 minutes, I guess. The correct answer is one minute before you are trapped. You don't have time. Time is your enemy. You measure it in seconds and minutes. If you didn't get out of that building in the first two minutes, you were dead. But let's begin at the beginning. The smoke detector goes off. It's the middle of the night. How would you react and answer truthfully? What is the first thing you think you do? Would you call a fire department? Would you rush off to see what set off the alarm? Would you wake everybody up? Or would you run for your valuables? Would you start getting dressed? I would start getting dressed. I'd call the fire department first. And I'd run for the valuables. Most people would do the wrong thing. The correct answer is, first wake everybody up and then get out of the house. It's important to remember time is against you. First, make sure everyone knows there's a fire, then get out. Make your calls from outside the burning building. You've taken the first step. You've awakened everyone. But as you try to get out, you run into dense smoke. What would you do? Would you take a deep breath and make a run for it? Would you crawl toward safety? Or would you go back into your room and close the door? Back in the room. I tried to get out of the stairway. The correct answer is you would go back into your room and close the door. If you allow it to remain open, the fire and smoke will follow you. It will spread through the house rapidly, killing everyone. The fire will spread with enormous speed. So remember, you must keep the door closed. That way you keep the fire and the smoke away from you. If the firefighters don't get to you in minutes or there's no help, jumping from a one-story dwelling would save your life. The fire in your house is now out of control, and you must evacuate as quickly as possible. True or false? The best way to make sure that everyone gets out safely is get out together. Is that true, or do you think that's false? Go out together, everyone, together, okay? I think it's false, because if you waited to get a whole group out, you'd probably all get stuck. Everybody should get out at the same time. The correct answer is false. Sometimes you can get out together, but in most cases, you have to leave individually, and that means you must have an escape plan. You must know where the exits are. You must know who is to help the youngest and the oldest. You must have a predetermined meeting place outside the building. And above all, you must hold fire drills so you know what to do. If you live in a high rise, there are other facts you should know in planning to get out alive. You're trapped in a high rise apartment. There's smoke, there are flames, and there's panic. But you've closed the doors against the heat, the flames, how long do you think you can remain alive inside this apartment? Do you think you could stay alive 15 minutes, 30 minutes? Could you survive in this apartment for 45 minutes? Or could you remain alive for over an hour? How much time do you have? The correct answer is more than one hour. Most high-rises today have doors which will contain the fire for several hours. The floors in high-rises are also protective and will keep the fire at bay for several hours too. You're back in your room. The firefighters have arrived on the scene. What should you do? A, call the fire department and give your location in the building. B, open the window to get air. C, hang a signal out the window to give your location. Or D, place wet towels around doors to keep out the smoke. The correct answer is all of the above. According to fire experts, you should open your windows top and bottom to ventilate your room. Stay at the window. Keep your head at the bottom for the fresh air intake. And if firemen are busy elsewhere in the building, don't panic. They'll only come for you if there's danger, and you may end up sitting the whole thing out quietly in your room. The questions you just answered underscore the points that a fire is black, it is not light, you won't be able to see. That smoke and gas will kill you, and not flames. That the heat is so intense, it alone can kill you. And that time, you have no time in a fire, you must get out. Now let's apply that knowledge and planning to get out alive. First, how you cope with the darkness. This is your bedroom. You've lived in it for years and you know it intimately. Yet when a fire breaks out, in minutes, it will turn into this. 
You're sound asleep in your bed, so you won't know this is happening. There's a fire in a room down the hall. The smoke is coming into your bedroom, filling every nook and cranny. It's blinding, choking smoke. It's slowly lowering to the bed. You won't smell the smoke because in your sleep, you can't smell smoke. Suddenly, you're awake. You've heard screams, fire sirens. You spring out of bed. But where's the door, the window, the closet, the lamp? This is what a fire is like. You will find yourself in total blackness. Fire is black. It is not light. You can't see. You must get down on the floor. If you do get down on the floor, you will suddenly discover there's more light. There's more air. The choking smoke is above you. At this point, you must remember three very important things. One, you get more latitude to move. The choking smoke and the hot air is above you. Here, too, use a flashlight. Have one next to your bedside for this sort of an emergency. It will help you find your way out. And third, you must have an escape plan. Know which way to move in the case of fire. At this level, I can get out. I know what my escape plan is. I've rehearsed it. I'm heading toward the exit. The door lies in this direction. If you know what to expect, you can get out alive. Know what to expect. Katie Kramer knew what to expect. She saved her family. I was sound asleep in my bed, and um, suddenly I felt something hot on my feet, and I looked, and my bed was catching on fire. It was black, totally black, and you couldn't see a thing in the room. I crawled over here and out the hall and got my mother and sister and father. So remember three key things. To help you survive the darkness in a fire, you've got to get down on the floor and crawl. A small flashlight may help in the dark, and you've got to have an escape plan. Rehearse it, because you probably won't be able to see. And now, how to cope with the smoke and gas in a deadly fire. You're in your bed and you're sound asleep. A fire breaks out in the early morning hours. The smoke fills your room, covers your bed, and the frightening thing is, you won't smell the smoke. Most victims of fires are found dead with a thin layer of soot across their faces. Because no matter how accurate and bitter the smoke, you won't smell it. The carbon monoxide will put you into a deeper and deeper sleep. It acts as an anesthetic. And the only defense you have against this smoke is a smoke detector. Where you place your smoke detectors and how many you have can spell the difference between getting out alive or death. Now watch what happens in this home specially designed by the Nassau County Fire Service Academy. The smoke begins pouring out into the first floor hallway. The alarm in the hall goes off after a minute and a half, but not before the hallway is already beginning to fill with smoke. Upstairs, the smoke detector outside the bedroom doesn't go off for another two and a half minutes. That's a full four minutes after our controlled fire is started. And that is why the fire experts advise you should have a smoke detector on every level in your home. Here, upstairs in the outside hall. And if you sleep with your bedroom doors closed, you should have a smoke detector in each of your bedrooms. The bigger the house and the more the rooms, the more the smoke detectors. This one here in the hallway downstairs went off first, gave us added time to get out. But there's one problem. 50% of the smoke detectors in this country don't work. That's because people don't change their batteries or they take the battery out and forget to replace it. Please, on your birthday or on a holiday, check your batteries and change them. A smoke detector can spell the difference between life and death. So remember, your life and the life of the smoke detector depends on its battery. The battery in my smoke detector was rusted to the mechanism. It's very embarrassing. You know, and I'm, I, feel, I feel terrible. I just, I never, never considered it. I never thought that there would, it, this would ever happen to us.